it. Um, Lord put this on my heart yesterday, but um, I never, it never could piece together in my mind. Um, usually it does. Um, but this morning when I woke up, I just knew that I was supposed to go over this. Um, sometimes that's what it's about. It's, it's more about God's timing. I think a lot of times you'll hear me talk a lot about um, we wait until the three day, you know, the three times, the, the Sunday morning, Sunday night, and the Wednesdays in order to do things. And sometimes I think that that actually hinders us because, you know, but what if we treated, it just comes to mind that way. And I'm not saying that those times are bad to do what we do, but just think about your girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, or wife. What if you just met them on certain days, you know, and the rest of the days you didn't? That becomes dangerous because, and, and it's not very loving. Why? Because it, there's no spontaneity to it. There's no real... I want to spend any time, any waking moment, whenever you're ready to talk, let's sit and talk. It's hard if we're honest with ourselves to drop everything we're doing and sit down and talk to somebody else, especially if we're wanting to do it. You know, I'm a, I'm a man that anybody that knows me, uh, I've had different hobbies over the years, you know, um, fished a lot, uh, went hunting a lot, um, worked in the garden, um, did little things around the house. Uh, I still, even as silly as it sounds, play video games. Well, anytime we're doing something that we want to do, it's very hard for us to stop and just do whatever God puts on our heart. Okay. And, and no man is perfect at this. We can talk about it all we want to, but no man's perfect at this. Okay. So, this is something that Jesus put on my heart. Uh, and when I woke up this morning, it's like, well, it's, I feel like we're supposed to go over it. So that's what I'm here doing. Uh, Matthew 23. Uh, this is a chapter right here that usually when somebody goes over it, they tend to accuse and attack. But what if we took the word of God and used it to check ourselves? Okay. What if we used it as a, like it says, it says that it's profitable for correction. What if we're using it as a guide and to correct ourselves? So as we read this, I'm going to point out a couple little things just that the Lord showed me. But Lord Jesus, bless us and take care of us and help us and guide us through this because it's, it's about Jesus. Um, today was the day that we're remembering that Jesus rested. And you say, well, rested, what do you mean? I said, well, this is the day that... Uh, Good Friday would have been the the, the Friday that he would have uh, died on the cross. Saturday would have been the day that he rested. Go figure that the day that he was actually in the tomb, his physical body would have been resting. Um, how amazing is that? Uh, that it, that's exactly the way it was supposed to be. That's what the Father said in heaven. So... And tomorrow would have been the day of resurrection, the Sunday. But let's go through these verses and just see what Jesus really said here. Okay? Look what it says here. Uh, Matthew 23, we're going to start in verse 1. It says, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, Now, I want you to, I want you to right there from the very beginning, who's he talking to? Okay, he, he's not talking to, if you think about this, he spake to the multitude and to the disciples. So his disciples are included. So if we're the people or if we're the disciples following Jesus, he's talking to us. Okay, but look who he's telling us about. Look what he says. The scribes and Pharisees and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. What was Moses' seat? Moses' seat was the seat of authority. The seat of, this is the one leading the people. It says, all therefore whatsoever they bid you, observe. That observe and do. 
but do not ye after their works. So anything they tell you to do, you need to just go ahead and do it. But don't do what they do. Very interesting, isn't it? Don't do after what they do. So in other words, don't walk in their steps. Just because other people are telling us that this is the way we ought to do things, you say, well, how am I supposed to observe something that somebody else says, but I'm not supposed to do what they do? Well, it's pretty simple. Don't follow after their works. And he's going to give us a reason why. He's going to explain this to us. Look what, look what it says. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. So what does that mean there, they bind them? Let's see right here what it says. That word bind there is desmeu. To be a binder, captor, and chain, to tie on, to load up. They load up men with all these things. They load them up. They put things on people's backs. Look, from the very beginning that the Lord woke me up and asked me to do all this, I didn't just decide one day that I wanted to start sharing God's word. God God actually woke me up one morning. Gave me some verses, Isaiah 45, chapter 45 to Isaiah 50. And I started reading them. And as I read them, I just knew I've got to share this with people because God's trying to tell us that he's here to help us and that and that he's trying to free us of these chains. That's who Jesus was. That's who he still is today. He died on the cross to do what? To, to free us, to help us. Okay? So look right here. They lay burdens on people. So they're putting things on people that people shouldn't have to be worried about. Remember he said, look, do what they tell you to do. He said, but don't do what they do. Why? Because they were talkers, not doers. They'd stand up and they'd talk about things that people did, but then they wouldn't do it themselves. So when, when we're, we're using this, we're not using this in an accusative way. We're using this to check ourselves. Do I do that? I mean, I'm, am I telling people to get up and read their Bible and read 10, 15 chapters a day when I know very well that I don't? Am I telling people that they need to, every whatever it takes, they need to get here or get there when I don't? We telling people that uh, they need to be there three or four times a week when there's weeks that I take vacation and I'm not. You know, uh, am I telling people that this is what they need to do when I know for a fact that that's not what sustains me. What sustains me is Jesus. Am I telling people that they're supposed to be walking a certain way and doing things when the fact is that I'm not? You know? I'm, am I telling people that they need to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, but the fact is, is I'm doing things on the sign, I don't really have that kind of trust? There's so many, this has so much application to so much of our lives that it's unreal. Um, am I telling people not to talk in a certain way, not make jokes, not make things when the truth is behind their back I am? Am I telling people to love their enemy when there's people that I hate and can't stand? This has a lot of application to us. Look what it says. It says, And lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. You see, they're going around telling people uh, different things when the fact is they can't take care of their own, their own personal problems. They can't take care of their own problems. You know, they have habits. They have things. Look, I have things in my life that I'm not able to move them. I'll just be honest with you. There's things that I still fight today that are still struggles. And they have been for several years. And you think, well, but so aren't you doing wrong? Yes, and I keep praying about it. But I'm not telling people to look, follow after what I say. No, I'm telling them to follow Jesus. I'm telling you, look, Jesus is the one that needs to help us. There are some things that the Lord has took from me just to show me that he's there, but there's other things that I'm weak on. But look what it says here. This is another thing we need to check on. Verse 5. Remember, we're not doing this to accuse others. We're doing this to look at ourselves, to look in the mirror. Look what it says here. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Is that why we're doing things? 
look, I struggled a lot with this. Do, do I get up and maybe sing a song just so everybody could hear me? Do I get up and preach this big thing just so everybody can hear me? Everybody can see what I'm doing? Do I go and walk the street so that I, do I announce it and everybody knows what's going on? You know, it, can I not go and just go to this little nursing home or does it have to be in front of all these people? Can I not just witness to one person at work or can it only be the person at church? We need to ask ourselves a our question. Why are we doing the things we're doing? You know, very serious. This right here is very serious questions we need to ask ourselves. Look what it says here. They make broad their phylacteries. Let's see right here what phylacteries is. Phylacteries. Phylacterion. Wearing slips of scripture or text. Guard case. Okay, so it's kind of like a little box that they used to wear. That they put little verses, like right down little verses and stuff in it. But everybody could see it. Everybody could see how many, you know, what they were doing, how many they had. And enlarge the borders of their garments. So, the in the hem, or hem, I don't know if I'm saying this word right. But you know how kind of like you cuff your pants at the bottom you can fold them over well the hem of their garments they used to actually write down different little things as they learned them remember Paul talked about that uh, when it come to the scripture that if you look at if you look as far as history goes they got to the point where they could memorize the scripture and they could say the script they could recite by memory the first four or five books the Pentateuch and you think to yourself wow that's pretty impressive well but the problem is that they would just stand and they would just say da, 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 and that was their way of bragging about how much they knew about things you know is is it about how many scriptures I have memorized no it's not need I ask yourselves that question you know it, um, am I just quoting verses or do I actually know what the words mean it's not just about quoting verses. It's a what, what if I could memorize or I could say the whole word of God by memory? And you think, well, that'd be awesome. Well, it would, but what would it ma Would it not be better for me to do one verse than for me to have the whole Bible memorized? That's kind of the point behind it. Am I just one of those that has the scriptures memorized, or am I doing what it says? Just a question that we ought to ask ourselves. <laughs> what it says here and love the uppermost rooms at feasts the uppermost rooms at feasts that means they sit in the high tables you see a lot anymore of places that well they're all about their meals they're all about their special little meetings that certain places have am I that way only certain people here and not everybody's invited only certain ones Little clicks that we have. Am I part of one of those little clicks? Or do I talk to everybody? Just little things, you know. This is what Jesus was talking about here. Don't be this way. He's describing and he's, we need to ask ourselves, are we doing these same things? And the chief seats and in synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. What's the, what's the terms that we're using? Pastor, evangelist, teacher, preacher. Do we have to be called by that or can we just call by our name? It's one thing to know the position that we carry. It's one thing to know that, hey, this is what God's called me to be. But if I'm looking to people to call me, oh, well, you need to call me pastor. Oh, well, you need to call me teacher. Oh, you need to call me this or call me that. Look, you, Don't look to see yourself called that. Look, my name is my name. Um, God's the one who is the master. God's the one. But look, because look what it says. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ. And all ye are brethren. What? A, how amazing would it be? You know, in the book of Ephesians, it keeps talking about 
that we all need to submit to one another. It doesn't just say to submit to the one in front. It says submit to one another. Imagine if the whole congregation would submit to one another. The man who came in and took the offering is just as important as the preacher. You know, that, that really doesn't happen a lot of times. We need to ask ourselves the question, am I lifting the pastor up more just because he's the pastor? Oh, well, he knows more about the word. Does he really? I mean, I, I, a lot of times that's not the case. A lot of times the, the one that knows the most is just the little man that sits in the corner that maybe never says anything. You know, he's been studying the word of God and he actually, does Does Jesus look at that? Does the Father in heaven look at that? It says no, that God's not a respecter of persons. You know, you look at stories in the Bible. Uh, Eli, God talked to him, but several times he messed up. He's the priest. He's the head priest over God's temple. And what happens? Well, twice. If I remember correctly, one is the mother of Samuel. He misunderstands what she's doing. Second time, it takes the little boy Samuel to talk to him because he's not doing right with his kids. His kids are getting away and doing whatever they want to, and God's trying to correct him. So the man of God that stands up front that we sometimes lift up too high doesn't always have it figured out. Like, I don't have it always. I don't have it figured out. I'm learning every day. Do, do I enjoy? Yes, I enjoy a lot of things. Have I learned more than I did when I was a child? Sure. But still struggle every day. We, we need to all realize that we're all brothers and we're all here to help one another. Okay? Look what it says here. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Do we realize that? That the greatest among us is going to be our servant. Are we the servant? Remember, we're using this to check ourselves. Are we the servant? Am I the Sunday school teacher that, oh, I'm the Sunday school teacher, so I teach this. Well, are you willing to learn from the other kids? Yeah, but I'm the teacher. Look, we're all brethren. You have a position given to you for a short time. Look what it says. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. What about that? A lot of times the one God gives the message to is the little kid. Why? Because nobody else is listening to what he said to do. When we get that position, how are we acting? Do we go around bragging about it later? It's hard. It, this right here, if we look at it as a check in the mirror... To ourselves you say well man I just realized I fall a lot well then guess what you've woke up to reality we all do and the only one that's the Savior is the Lord Jesus Christ that's the point the point is we realize that Jesus Christ is the only one that's perfect he's the master he's the Lord we're all just brothers a couple more verses here this is a lot to take in at one time. It really is. Look what it says. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. So do I fit in that category of scribes and Pharisees? A lot of people want to say no. Look, a lot of times I fall into that category. By this checklist, a lot of this times I'm saying one thing and I'm having a hard time with it. Am I being honest to everybody about it? What it says. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. Now, let's, let's look at this word right here, hypocrite, because I think it's misunderstood sometimes. A hypocrite is just a stage actor under an assumed character. A dissembler. Stage acting hip, hypocrite. So, a actor. Somebody who's pretending to be something that they're not. Do we have those? Are we those? Are we that? Are we truly what we say we are? Look, if you're honest with people and tell them, yeah, look, I struggle every day. Yeah, I, I try and read your Bible. I have a hard time reading my Bible every day. I have my, sometimes I have a hard time reading my Bible once a week. Being honest, that's who God sees. God sees honesty. God already knows. He's just waiting for us to tell the truth a lot of times. 
A lot of times we stand up and we, oh, we this and we that. And look, the only reason we get to stand up and say anything is because the Lord Jesus Christ in us and gave us the strength to do it. It's nothing that I've done. It's just a fact. Look what it says here. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. You close it up. You shut the door on heaven. Why? Because you've turned it into works. Are we doing that? Are we telling people that the only way they can get saved is by coming to see us? Are we telling people the only way that you can get strength in this Christian walk is if you get up and read your Bible every morning? Uh, are we telling people that the only way that uh, you can get saved is if you keep coming three times a week? Uh, are, are we doing that? Are you telling people that, hey, if you want to get over that problem, then guess what? Um, come Sunday morning and you'll hear a great message. Is that what we should be doing? Or should we be telling them that, hey, look, or is that what we're doing? Are we shutting up the kingdom of heaven? How do we open the kingdom of heaven? Well, this weekend is a very good reminder of this. Jesus Christ on the cross, his blood, his sacrifice, his overcoming the grave, that's what gives us strength. That's what gives us hope. That's what increases our faith. That's what it's about. Look, is going and meeting together wonderful? Yes, it is. Is sitting down and reading our Bible wonderful? Yes, it is. But where does our salvation come from? It doesn't come from works. It comes from faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is where it comes from. Why? So that no man should boast. Look what it says in here. Suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Neither suffering suffer ye them that are entering to go in. You can't put up with the ones that are actually going in. You can't put up with the ones that are actually speaking the truth. Are we that way? Somebody gets up and says something that we don't agree with. Is it because we don't agree with them? Is it because what the Bible says? A lot of times we want, don't want to learn and grow because we don't want to accept that, that what we thought we knew maybe was wrong. These men right here that he's talking to and talking about, they're having a hard time. But remember who he's talking to? The disciples and the people. He's telling them, beware of these Pharisees. Beware of these Sadducees. Why? These are the people sitting in Moses' seat. And this is how they are. He, he's telling just straight out, look, this is what they're doing to you. You realize that Jesus is basically putting out in the, in the open the truth of how these people really are. And what did they do to him? Well, they crucified him. Why? Because he was telling others the truth about who they were. Look what it says here. For ye devour woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses. And for a pretense, what's that word pretense there? Pretense, prophasis, an outward showing for a show, for a cloak, just so everybody can see what you're doing. And for pretense, make long prayer. Now there's some people that get up and they just naturally, they get up and they give a long prayer. Nothing wrong with that. But there is some people that, are we getting up praying just so that everybody else can hear what we have to say? We need to ask ourselves that. Devour widows' houses. We see this a lot, yet we walk right behind them. How do they devour widows' houses? Well, it's pretty simple. A lot of times they take the money from people. It's all about money. You need to get away from these people that it's all about money. Why? We need to have an offering. We can decorate this building and we can do this, do that. Look, it ain't, it ain't about that. About let's take that money and let's help somebody who's really hungry, need something. You know, a lot of times... We've spent so much money and then we have to make sure that we keep everybody coming. Why? Because we're afraid of losing the building. Need to get away from all that. We don't, we don't really need to build. A lot of times I think we could actually sell the building, uh, give it away and, and take that money and give it to the poor and just meet out of our houses and it would be just fine. Uh, sometimes we think we have to have a building and the truth is God only sends about 10 people there. It'd probably be better and wiser if we took care of that building and let it go and quit holding on to earthly things 
And guess what? Just meet out of our homes. Ten people can meet out of a home. But are we doing that? Or are we opening up our homes? Just to, Remember, this is a checklist for us. Look what it says here. For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. Proselyte. Proselytos. An, an arriver from a foreign region. A, con, a convert to Judaism. So we, we go over all, walk all these miles. Going boats overseas and everything. To do what? To get somebody to come and to come with us to church. And be, be part of our group. And. Come, come sit with us. So we go through all this work and effort to do all this. And look what it says. And when he is made, so when he actually converts, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. So what happens? When that person we bring in is a child and starts to actually get up and, and and wanting to witness and wanting to do this and wanting to do that. Oh no, wait a minute. It makes us uncomfortable because God may show them more than it does us. Um, we need to ask ourselves this question. When we're sitting there and, and, and we're talking amongst ourselves or we're listening and some new person comes in and they do get saved and we're all excited and we're, we're man, this is awesome because they've accepted Jesus as their savior and all of a sudden they start learning the scriptures and we're sitting there listening to them and sometimes they say something that may, oh, well, I was wrong about that. Well, look at that. The Lord showed that new person right there all this stuff. Man, they've really been studying their Bible. They've been learning. It's obvious that God's helped that person. So what do we do? Do we start, well, just a little different or that person's not doing this right? So are we going to be that way? you got to remember, look, this is what the Pharisees did. The Pharisees were the ones, the holy people, walking around doing things that they've done this way for a long time. wasn't the way God showed them. This is the way that it had turned into. Jesus kept telling them, don't you know the word says this? Don't you know the word says that? He even talked to Nicodemus and said, man, you're a master of the people, a teacher, and you don't even know these things? So, and the same thing happens in our days nowadays. You have... 20, 30 year old people that have that have been going to church doing these things. Look, I'm in that way a lot of times. I'd been a long time and when I actually started sitting down and reading for myself, I was like, wow, I misunderstood this. I had other brothers. Still to this day, we have discussions about things and I'm like, hmm, well maybe I need to rethink this. Are we going to be able to rethink it and redo things or are we just going to look at others and be like, well, that's kind of weird. Well, that's that person's different. Well, no, that can't be right. Why? Because I'm right. We can't have that type of attitude. If we have that type of attitude, then we're not submitting to one another. We're not. We're lifting ourselves up above them and don't even realize it. Look right here. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall, wear by the, shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Okay, so see, they're lifting up the temple over the gold. So which one's more important? This is a very interesting set of scriptures that Jesus has here. Okay. So they swear by the gold of the temple, he's a debtor. So the temple itself... Which one's more important, the temple or the gold? Well, they said, well, the gold. Well, go figure. They're worried about the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it's nothing. So the altar ain't nothing. It's all about the gold. Like what he says. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. So it's not about the altar. It's about the gift that's on the altar. <laughs> And he says, look right here, ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Who therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it. And by all the things thereon, and whosoever shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it. 
and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that sweareth by the heaven sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay the tithe of mint and anise. Now look right here. They pay their tithes. It's all about these precious things. Are we just getting up and we doing that? House of God's house of God. But what is the house of God? Remember, Jesus even talks about this is the house of God. This is where his Holy Spirit dwells in, is in us. The temple, though. People talking about the temple back in that day. They were thinking, well, if you do this or if you do that, look, don't swear by anything. That's what Jesus is getting to there. Don't swear by anything. All of this is, is temporal for us, but and when you swear, well, by heavens, this is this. Look, leave that alone. That's God. Leave God alone. You need to be respectful. Are we doing that? You know, sometimes you hear people that, oh, well, we shouldn't this, shouldn't that. They're the worst cussers there are in the world. And yet they go to church. And they are part of these groups. And they're deacons a lot of times. And they're pastors. And they're uh, they're, they're the evangelists. Yet they're swearing. Yet they do. And you say, well, well, I never thought about that. Well, you need to ask yourself, is that what I'm doing? Shouldn't be swearing by anything. Just let your yes be yes and your no be no. That's what the scripture says. Look what it says here. For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. So you're all about, you're all about, now listen to this very carefully because this is something that a lot of people misunderstand. Should we be given our tithes? Yes. Who should we be giving our tithes to? Well, I had somebody tell me once that I should, uh, that I, and that I, man just asked me one time, he said, so when we give our tithes, he said, should we give it to one place or do you think sometimes should we give it to, just give it to a person that's in need? And I said, you know, it's a funny thing. I said, because I think it's obedience more than anything. Remember, it's what he said. Obedience is more important than sacrifice. I think sometimes puts it on, God puts it on our hearts to give it to a person. We just don't need to talk about it, just like the verses we just read. And then I think sometimes he's meant for us to give it to a place. But you got to remember these Pharisees, they're all about the gold. They're all about the prestige of where they're at. So a lot of times I think God wants us to just obey him and do what we do, what he says to do with it. It's harder for us to just do what the same thing over and over. Very hard for us to just do what they ask us to do. You take a couple, for instance, one wants to buy this, one wants to buy that. It's hard to come to an agreement and just do what the other one asks to do. But if you truly love, you'll submit and you will. So it becomes a struggle again. You say, man, well, I struggle letting go of the money anyway. Well, then that's your part of being truthful. Remember, we're using this to check ourselves. So this is something that we need to do to check ourselves, to realize that, hey, we all struggle with these things. Okay? Look right here. But you avoid, so you pay the... You pay the tithe of mint, anise, and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. We tend to talk more sometimes, are we more worried, are we talking more ourselves about how I put money in the offering, or how I gave to so-and-so, or had this, or is our focus more on judgment, mercy, and faith? Those are the three. And I think it's interesting that he compares. I did a little study one time about the mint, anise, and the cumin compared to the judgment, mercy, and faith and put the three together side by side. And it was amazing how that turned out. I encourage you to do that. But they all have similarities. Okay? But which one's more important? Making a righteous judgment. Making a judgment about, hey, this is right and wrong. Hey, we need to have mercy on this person. This person needs our help. And just face, trust in God that, look, I, I just know this is what we're supposed to do. What's more important? Remember Jesus when he was healing somebody? The, he even brought it up one time. He said, so 
on the Sabbath day, we're not supposed to do nothing. But how many of you are, aren't going to go out to worry about your ox? But yet you don't want me to heal this man right here on the Sabbath. Well, let's carry that over to some of us on Sundays. You know, hey, you say on Sunday that we shouldn't be working, but are you going to the restaurant and make sure somebody else waits on you on Sunday? Well, no, I don't do that either. Well, the truth is, is somebody's doing something for you on Sunday because I know a lot of people, they go home and they sit and they watch TV right after they've made the message. And sometimes the shows that they watch are worse than what they could have ever talked about. So sometimes we forget. Sometimes, remember, it says that it's not just doing those things, but it's watching those things or it's observing those things that that's just, you're just as guilty. Remember, it talks about that in the book of Romans. <laughs> So if we use this as a checklist, what are we doing? We are, are we really trying to walk? This puts a very honest look in the mirror if we start to, you start to realize in your own life when you start just reading through these verses and maybe you're getting aggravated at me. But you have to remember that it's not me, it's God's word right here, putting us in a corner, putting us to realize, you say, well, Man, ain't none of us going to be able to walk this walk. Well, it's funny because the disciples said that too when Jesus talked about the rich man. He said, well, who could be saved? He said, you got to remember with God, all things are possible. With men, they're not, but with God, they are. It, it's all about accepting the fact that, man, I can't do this on my own. There ain't no way. That, that's an honesty that we need to have with ourselves. Okay? This right here. Look what it says. Ye blind guides which strength. Okay. Let's go back here. It says. These ought ye to have done. And not to leave the other undone. So we should do them both. Ye blind guides which strain at a gnat. And swallow a camel. A lot of times that's what we're doing. A lot of the times we're getting aggravated. Because I ah, somebody don't show up this there that day. When the truth is. We're doing a whole lot worse than they are. There's a whole lot more important things. Sometimes we're getting too focused. Well, I don't think they ought to wear jeans to church, or I don't think they ought to wear this, or I don't think Christians should put their hair up in a bun, or I don't think, I mean, there's all these different things. What are we really focused on? What does God really say sin is? Sometimes that's what we need to be focused on instead of all these other things. Look what it says, woe unto you, Scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within are full of extortion and excess. Truth is, that right there is what it's more about than anything. Sometimes we're more worried about making the outside look better than the inside. Some people work so hard on exercising to get their bodies fit. They get nice suits. They get everything dressed up. Are we doing that? When the fact is, the inside of us is horrible. We, we hate people. We don't like this. We don't like that. We're mouthy. We, we're, we're talking bad about people. We're the gossipers a lot of times. We're the ones that have the clicks. We're the ones. So, is that us? Seems to me like we need to be correcting it because Jesus is warning it right here. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like whitened sepulchers. You know, when I thought of this right here, they usually have a, a stone, that sepulcher stone is a white marble. Beautiful. Everybody uses them for countertops and all kinds of things. But it's just a white, cold piece of stone. That's all it is. Is that what we are? Look nice and pretty. Don't move. Don't go nowhere. Always in the same place. Don't ever go out and talk to nobody. It's amazing, isn't it, what he compares them to. Look what he says. Which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead bones. Dead men's bones. And of all uncleanness. Even so, ye are outwardly appear righteous unto men. So everybody thinks you're doing good. Look, this is the fear that I have. I just confess to you, I'm not a perfect man. I have a lot of issues, a lot of problems. Well, then why do you share what you do? Because the Lord puts it on my heart. If not, it wouldn't come out of my mouth, I promise you. Because I do have a lot of struggles. I fall quite a bit. I, I, I get back up, and the Lord helps me get back up. But trust me, I, I'm amazed more every day how he shows me what he does. Because it's like, Lord, I'm 
more pitiful than anybody out there. Look what it says. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Is that us? Do we, do we talk a lot about it, but we ourselves are a mess? This is the part I struggle with. Yeah, a lot of times that's me, if I want to be honest. But within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of prophets. Build the tombs of prophets. They were the ones that killed the prophets a lot of times. And garnished the sepulchres. They even steal from the ones after they killed them. Of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers of them in the blood of prophets. So these same guys are saying that, well, if we would have been back in the day, we wouldn't have let them kill all those prophets. <laughs> Look right here what he says. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. But ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? So ask yourself this question. Am I sitting there because, and I like the guy that's up there just because he sounds great, just because he makes me feel good? Or am I looking for listening to somebody, or do I enjoy listening to somebody that shows me where I'm doing things wrong? Because I want to correct, because I do want to repent, because I want to be walking this line. I'm just as guilty. A lot of us, well, if I was back in those days, I wouldn't have done that. Truth is, we'd have been right there with them. Anytime somebody says something that we're doing wrong, we don't like it. None of us do. Correction is not something. But this checklist right here, if you're, if you're a Christian person, if you're an unsaved person, and you just want to do better in life, then you need the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You need to repent and confess that you're doing wrong. Confess that your life is a mess and sin and that you need the Lord Jesus Christ and you believe in him and his sacrifice. For him to come and forgive you through his sacrifice, then what will he do? He'll lift you up and he'll pick you up and he'll wash you off and he'll put you back on your feet and he'll help you through this walk. And same as he rose from the dead, same way he'll raise us up one day bring us to the Father. Are we going to be that way? Are we going to be a generation of vipers? Are we going to be serpents? Or are we going to try to help people? How are we ever going to escape this place called hell if we are doing the same things and we're hard to people and we're, we're hateful to people and we're always cutting them down and we're always putting more rules on them that God doesn't even talk about? We need to ask ourselves a lot of times. Look, I've been part of some Churches that had rules, that they had more rules than what the scriptures had. And I've been part of some that said, oh, we follow the rules and we follow this. And the truth is that what they were following had nothing to do, wasn't even mentioned in the word of God. Why can't we just let Jesus be the judge? Why can't we just sit back and all of us be brethren and learn from each other? It's hard. It's hard for two to walk together unless they agree. It's hard to find two people that agree. Lord Jesus Christ, help us, because we're Pharisees and Sadducees more than we realize, I'm afraid. This last few verses here, look what it says. It says, Wherefore, behold, I send, send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall you encourage shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood and shed upon the earth. From the blood of the righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar, Verify, say, verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, 
Thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto you, unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as the hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? And ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, for I say unto you, ye shall not see henceforth, not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Jesus is telling them right there, look, I've sent people to you, and 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 you don't want to listen. You just want to keep doing things. Is that who we are? Or we just want to keep that stony heart to where we're not going to listen to who God's trying to send us? Are we never going to try to improve, try to move forward? Are we always going to be this way? I'm afraid a lot of times we are. Lord, help us and bless us. Lord, forgive us. You know, because I don't want jesus to go away and not talk to me i don't i don't i don't i don't i don't want to be in that eternal place called hell a lot of us christians we're pushing people more away than we are trying to help people and we don't even realize it we need to instead just let the lord jesus christ help us and just try to be good examples of him it's all supposed to be about jesus Look, this last little few verses here from 34 to 39, it, it kind of reminds me in the tribulation of the great whore that it talks about, you know, that they become a place of devils. They become the worst place there is. All the blood of all the prophets and all the blood of everything. What are we going to be? Are we going to be the accuser? Are we going to be... The, the ones that are full of filth all the time, just talking about people. Are we going to be the bride and white? It's a choice we have to make. It's hard to be the bride and white. It's hard to be the one that's trying to help people even though they've done you wrong. It's, 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 it's hard to try to do things the way you should do them, but that's who Jesus was. Are we going to struggle? Sure, we're going to struggle. But at least we're going to be honest with ourselves. And look, I'm not saying, well, you just live and keep living here because you got to be honest and I'm just a hateful man. No, just confess your sins. Take them to Jesus and let him help us and change us. That's what we need to do. Use the word of God to correct us so that in turn we can go share it with others. But who should we be sharing? Is it, I'm sharing, oh, that I'm changed and I'm better and I'm this. No. Tell them who changed you. Be honest with you. Be honest with them. Say, look, it didn't have nothing to do with me reading 20 chapters a day. It was Jesus came into my life and Jesus changed me. It didn't have to do nothing. But where do you go to church? Look, it don't have to do with where you go to church. Yeah, I sit down with these people and we talk about the Lord a lot. And it's a place where we get together and we talk about him. But look, that's not, that's not what changed me. What changed me was Jesus on that cross. What changed me was the blood that he shed on that cross. That's what changed me. He came into my life. That's what it's supposed to be about. Lord Jesus Christ bless you all. May he use this for whatever he wants to in each one of our lives. It's always He's always trying to look out for us. What it says is washed by the word. That's what happens. Same as you go take a shower and wash everything off. Sit down and you read through God's word for a little bit and it does wash us off. Now we got to do the most important thing and what's that? Go and do it. Lord Jesus bless you all and y'all have a wonderful day.